morning friends today i have my usual flower orders going out which given that i'm not supposed to be in started my season is a reflection of the heat wave we're having so the flowers are getting ahead so i've got some ordinary flowers to cut but i've also got a special little project to cut and make up for you i'm going to do 20 matching jars for a fundraising event and um I thought I'd start by showing you how I have gridded my cutting boxes. <laughs> so these are very cheap plastic boxes, which I've had for years and years and years. I mean, uh, probably 10 years and use them every summer. If you keep plastic out of direct sunlight during the summer, then it lasts and lasts and lasts. If you leave it in the sun, it'll it'll get very brittle and crack, so it doesn't last so long. But this these have gone on for years and years. Anyway, I'm cutting quite a lot of short stems, little tiny daffs and little blue muscari. It's a blue and yellow combination. Can't imagine why. Um, and so because I've got such short stems, I've made a grid on my... Uh, uh, should we call this a vessel? This is not a bucket, neither is it a vessel. But anyway, it's a useful thing for cutting short stems into. And making a grid like this means that they won't fall over, I hope, or will fall over less when I cut them. So it's quite a useful way to do it. I've got 20 of these jam jars. Um, and this is a charity event raising money for Ukraine. And so... I've planned in advance how many stems I'm going to put in each jar. And the answer, since you ask, is between nine and 12. <laughs> Depends on what I find outside. But there will be three muscari, three little blue grape hyacinths, and three little yellow daffs in each jar. And then um, three stems of foliage in each jar. So it's really, really simple. But it's very worth, if you're doing an event like this it's really worth counting your stems before because then you know exactly how many stems you need to cut so i need 60 stems of muscari 60 daffs little yellow daffs and 60 stems of foliage and then if i have a little bit more they can be the sort of little extra but um but my basic look is going to be three 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 in each vase so it's really it's quite quick um, and it's really worth having that number in your head because if you're going cutting in your garden, you could cut and cut and cut and then not use half the material or you could cut what you think is enough and actually it's not. So design in your head, even if it's a really simple design like this, three, 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 done. Um, and when I finish them, so they're nice jars. The thing about a glass jar is it catches the light. So when it's got a little mix in the... Um, inside it you want a little posy like this but you can imagine that when that's got water in it the light it catches I particularly like a jar with straight edges because then it really does catch the light and in some ways if the posy is ever fat enough you sort of forget it's a jar it looks like a vase but it's an inexpensive way to have nice containers on the table and because it's a fundraiser um, for our friends who are being who are under attack, I'm going to ribbon them all. They're all going to have blue and yellow ribbons, just in case anybody forgets what it's all about. So let's go cutting. Come on. Oh, it's not, it's, I've got somebody coming at 10. I've got somebody else coming at 12.30. And I'm teaching a workshop at 5. And somewhere in between that, there's the school run. Better get on. Now, do you think that the rosemary counts as foliage or blue? I think I'll have some for my posies, don't you? And you see how the string across the containers holds up little bunches? So that's just 20 bunches of, that's 20 stems of uh, rosemary, not masses, but just one for each little posy it will be very attractive, I think. Look. Who's my faithful friend? He's staying here. She follows me around and just keeps to hand. That's Tea Cake the Border. She looks much less scary than she can be when there are other dogs around. 
also in flower and a bit more yellowy for my yellowy yellow and blue posies is my box uh, we don't have very tidy box plants we chop the tops off them from time to time but um, when they flower they're very pretty and for shorts little dinky posies they're very useful oh Ooh, look who's snuggling up in here it's a lovely sunny day I'm gonna have to keep an eye out for the ladybirds and make sure they stay outside now a little patch of muscari I don't know if I'm going to get 60, but I'm going to try. Um, I've got more than one patch. Now, you see how they've got very short stems, close to the ground. So if you get right to the bottom, and feel your way to the bottom, and then gently pull, you get a fair bit more stem. So it's still a dinky little fella, but um, you get more stem than if you cut them. Let's try again. Here's another one. You get better at it. <clears throat> Gently. And you see the white bit has been underground. And so it gives you a bit, slightly longer stem. Right, let's see if we can get 60 of these. There we are, 60. Tiny little handful, but they're only going in those little jars. And they're a good blue, aren't they? I think they'll really make the point and you can see how i've put them in my string square here and having a bit of greenery next to them is just holding them up and they won't fall in the water and get very soggy and i've cut 20 of these lovely talia narcissi not strictly yellow <laughs> very much not i think white for peace don't you I'm going to have some of these very bright yellow daffs with orange middles because they're cheerful. Um, but I've cut them all in relatively tight bud because the event is tomorrow evening. So it's possible these will all come out. But if they don't, people will take these posies home, I hope, afterwards. And so it'll be a surprise for when they get them home. Flowers need to go on and on. They can't all be... You've got to have some uh, something fun to come, I think, rather than having all your happiness in one go. Really coming along quite nicely. You've got the little white talia, and then this is a tiny little narcissus that I bought, by, I bought by mistake years ago, and I hardly ever use it because it's such a short stem. But it's really very nice in, it's a multi-headed, I don't know what it's called. If anybody knows what it's called, please say. Um, but it's really very sweet, nice, good egg yellow middle. And this variegated euonymus, you see how, it's really nice with this mix, isn't it? And then I cut all the really fat doubles that are fully out. I've cut them because I think they'll be nice in the mix. More, they're more like a scrambled egg <laughs> in the mix. If you can always park your trolley, trolley in the shade, it will really help because flowers don't like being in the full sun. You can see how out here, it's quite bright. It's so hot, it's quarter past 10 in the morning on the 23rd of March. I hope nobody's still saying they don't believe in global warming because this is just hot. Now, I always have a plan when I'm out cutting but that doesn't mean I won't be opportunistic. And look who's flowering this early. This is dead nettle, absolutely fantastic cut. Look at the beautiful little white flowers. So I'm not gonna say no when I'm offered this. Right, I think we're done. I've got some lovely grasses in the studio left over from something else that I'll use. So time to go back and get on. If you're making lots of the same thing, it's really much easier and quicker if you fill them all with water and if you're going to ribbon them, ribbon them first before you make them. This is a lastminute.com uh, fundraiser for Ukraine. So my ribbons don't quite match. They're, I'm using what I've got. So I've got two shades of bright yellow and two shades of blue and a little bit of darker blue velvet ribbon. And I've just mixed it all in. And I think actually having not all the same, I quite like it when it's not quite so matchy matchy. 
having slightly different ribbon gives you a different gives you a sort of depth of field i think so um yeah i'm enjoying those anyway let's make the posies so link, dinky little posy each one actually these are going to have 15 stems and i will count 15 into each one they won't be exactly the same but they'll have because they're all 15 there will be a sort of weight which will make them similar uh three stems of grass count as one in my head um but they're sweet aren't they very dinky and i've got them quite short because um when you have them tied they look very sweet they look sweet in the posy so that's 15 stems in a jar that's been tied up but if you tie the stems then you can put them all in so that they hold themselves together can you see how they're sort of light because they're none of them touching the bottom if i put the stems in one by one you'll end up pushing because they're quite small jars and they've got quite narrow heads i'll end up pushing them all in and you'll end up with a sort of squashed mess on the ground on the bottom of the jar and i think because they're so dinky it's worth having something lighter um and that's why i like to cut the stems short enough that they don't touch the bottom it makes the whole arrangement sort of lift itself like a dancer like a dancer uh anyway right there's number one let's make the rest and there they all are finished i quite like that i do like the mix of ribbons and they're very dinky uh not especially yellow in the end i put all the muscari in little clumps together because they'll grow a bit um overnight <laughs> ready for the party and if you've got very small blo blotches of color then put them together and you see more of them they they don't disappear on you anyway these will now spend a cool evening here in the barn and i will deliver them tomorrow for this great event it's castle carey the people of castle carey and the artisans of castle carey are giving a dinner to raise money for ukraine and all sorts of small businesses i will put their names in the blurb that go with this clip have offered their services in order to help raise this money it should be a really big event anyway uh, i'll deliver them tomorrow and hopefully be able to film them in place right onwards and upwards more jobs to do do you see what i mean about the light in the jars it's very fresh and light i do like them tucked away on the this piece of furniture is called the waste not want not for obvious reasons and they're just tucked there for the night tomorrow they'll get delivered <laughs> little people if you've made posies the night before an event it's really worth checking the water levels before you deliver them because they drink if you make posies the night before an event it's really really worth checking the water levels before you deliver them because they're surprisingly thirsty and they really can drink we pack our posies in bale arm trays and just roll a little bit of brown paper between the jars to support them and to stop the flowers bruising each other. It's a very simple system. And then they're quite safe in the back of the dirty old Skoda. Right, so here they all are in their place. And one more tip I will give you. If you are planning to make small jars for tables, and you're having any kind of event, make sure that the jars are not so big that there isn't room for them. I have barely been able to squeeze these tiny little jars into the place for the dinner. That is, honestly, that is like the toppest tip of all the tips in this clip. I always say the best till last. So there we have it. 
Castle Carey Market House filled tonight with people raising money for Ukraine. And if ever there were a good cause, this is it. It has a real village hall to it, feeling to it. But look at the beautiful windows and the hammer beam roof. I'll show you the building outside, it's amazing. And these little daffs do look just dandy. Right, so here is the amazing building where this great dinner is being held. Look at that. And you go all the way to the top and it's got a clock tower and a weather vane. It is a really beautiful. It's the old marketplace building in Castle Carey in Somerset. And Lucas Holweg is doing the food. And there, over here, is the Somerset Wine Company. Uh, Millie is doing the wine. And Capture by Lucy, who is a neighbour, has done all the printing. How beautiful. And all these other people have been involved in one way or another to raise money for Ukraine. What amazing, what an amazing effort. I think, well, the world is going to hell in a handcart. People just get on and help where they can. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my uh, help and advice remaking masses of jam jar posies. I hope I've raised your jam jar posy game. Um, if you have enjoyed this clip, then please do subscribe to the channel. Press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got new clips coming out. And if any of the tips and tricks I've given you during this session have been useful, you can always buy me a coffee. The link is in the blurb and for each clip and in the blurb for the thing. The flowers that I've done are dressing this lovely evening, which is hashtag Kiev's for Kiev. Uh, I'm tagging flowers for Ukraine um, and it is an organisation, it's a basically, it's a collaboration between lots of foodie people in this area of Somerset who've got together to raise money for Ukraine. So it's also hashtag cooking for Ukraine. Um, I will put as much blurb as I can into the blurb, 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 blurb. Anyway, enough of that. Have a lovely evening. I will see you soon. Ciao.